What's up, everyone? Welcome to Stan Philly Sports District for December 19th, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Well, that absolutely sucked. Um, more on that in a minute. It is Tuesday. Time for our weekly dose of positivity slash motivation. I'm going to be completely honest. It's hard to feel positive after what we all witnessed last night. So we're going to at least get the motivation down. And I really like this quote. It's something that sometimes I struggle with in my personal life, whether it be home repairs, stuff with work, uh, just even things with the kids and money, whatever, weight loss journeys. But I, I really like it. It doesn't necessarily have a, a sports tie-in today. But don't judge your chapter one off of someone else's chapter 20. And, and I think that's pretty profound, meaning everybody's on their own journey in different spots. And we've talked a little bit about this before. But just because somebody else is here and you're still here, don't overlook the fact that they had to get from here to here anyway. And all the, the trials and tribulations that go with that, the hard work and effort that they put in. Uh, so I really like that to kind of put things into perspective, uh, especially for me, a year and a half into this podcasting stuff and trying to just navigate and figure out which way I want to go and, and, and judge it based on how far we've come in a year and a half. Uh, and don't look at somebody who's been doing it for years or has training, uh, like a school degree. So, so it, it's very, and you can put put this into any aspect of your life, but I, I really thought that was good for today's Tuesday motivation. Don't judge your chapter one based on someone else's chapter 20. Run your own race, as they like to say. Uh, back when I was running, uh, I, I don't want to call it competitively, uh, but when I was running in races, you run your race. Don't worry about everybody around you and, and put out the distractions and focus on your own book. Start with chapter one and, and then write your own book. Don't worry about what your neighbor's doing over there in chapter 20. And that is today's motivation slash positivity, although there's not much positivity today. Um, the, the the Grinch that stole Christmas from us. Uh, and it's our own green eagles for that. But again, more on that in a minute. I always say, too, I will always like to keep things as factual and up-to-date as possible. And yesterday when we were talking about uh, the Temple Owls going to Kentucky and I mentioned the Final Four and that I thought, like, how Lear led them in 1956 to the Final Four, I was right with that. But it isn't Milk McVie that led them in 58. It was Guy Rogers. Bill McVie was uh, the owl without a vowel was before um, – the, the final four runs. So I wanted to make sure that was right. It was Hal Lear and Guy Rogers that led them to the two final fours. All right. Speaking of Philly college hoops, be sure to check out this week's, the latest back to the future. Uh, we did a little look at Herb McGee's career. Uh, probably one of the most underrated person, people in the city when it comes to sports milestones and recognitions and achievements. Uh, so be sure to check that out. I, I like to, I thought of it more as like a bonus advent calendar gift for you guys. I got to spend a little bit more time. So go ch listen to that. Back to the Future with a PH wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. All right. We are slowly getting through our 25 days of kindness. Christmas is right around the corner. Uh, and today's an easy one as things are wrapping up, especially this week. And this is coming from a former teacher, administrator currently, Make sure you give your kids, teacher, it doesn't have to be a gift. Don't even worry about a gift. Shoot them an email and say thank you, uh, especially this week because kids are off the chain this week. They're bouncing off walls, getting ready for Santa, getting ready for um, winter break, getting excited and all that. The teachers deserve your thank you every day, but especially weeks like this leading into holidays, make sure, and again, it doesn't have to be a gift. You don't even have to give them a card. Shoot them an email and say, hey, Mrs. Smith, thank you so much for putting up with my badass kid. Um, I know he can be tough. Um, and no, my t Thatcher's son's or teacher's name is not Mrs. Smith, but I've had had those conversations with her. Uh, but that's our 25 days of kindness. Go thank your kid's teacher for all of their hard work so far this year. Uh, but mostly just for making it through this week and not drinking while on the job. All right, the game. And as always, the day after, this is I'm going to be all over the place, acting with more emotion than logic. Although, logically, it's probably just as brutal. Um, 2017 loss. Uh, I mean, let's start off with the one positive that I'm going to say. <clears throat> 
Keely Ringo did not look bad. Uh, I think we might have something for the cornerback of the future, which leads me into the next. Uh, Bradbury sucks. I mean, he completely just fell off the cliff. Uh, I, I don't know what happened. I mean, that second half, they just melted down all, the, whole, the entire team. Um, and I wish I would have, conf- like, I was half asleep when I saw it. Of course, Darius Slay, not even in the games, talking shit. Oh, well, I've had a couple Pro Bowls. Like, t- t- dude, nobody cares. Like, don't fight with people on Twitter. Like, your, your team just, basically, the season's over now, and you're, you're talking about Pro Bowl selections? Come on, dude. Uh, Bradbury, I have no idea what he was doing. Um, you, you, you lost to Drew Locke. You let Drew Locke go 90 yards and under with like less than two minutes. Like, huh? Uh, Drew Locke. I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, you could say that there was pass interference on the interception to uh, Quez Watkins, but Quez just showed no fight on that. Like he just got mauled. And I mean, he needs to go. He needs to be gone. I mean, we need a third receiver for next year. Um, that's just it is what it is. Um, Hurts. I don't care if you, he was sick. He's out there playing, and he, this is what we've been seeing all year from him. I mean, I, I saw a few people say it on Twitter, and I mean, it's I kind of didn't want to buy into it early in the season, thinking they would put it together. But this is who that this team is. And when they were winning and finding ways to win games, it was different because it masked a lot of the the warts that this team has. But, I mean, they've done a complete 180. They're finding ways to lose. There's no excuse for losing that game. None whatsoever. I I mean, you melt it down. And everybody, like coaches, like players, everybody just – I mean, I hate to say it because I know a lot of the former players on the radio hate when people say this. Uh, because it's like, you don't know, blah, 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 blah. But they played with no heart. Um, and luckily, Seattle was that bad, or else they would have gotten blown out again. I think that's lost in there. The fact that it was Drew Locke. Uh, I think Geno Smith would have blown the Eagles out yesterday. They're not a good team right now. Um, and I, I blame a lot of that on Howie for, for making the wrong decision. And it's tough to get because Howie's got us the Super Bowl. He's gotten us there last year. But some of the moves are questionable, like T.J. Edwards letting him go and not re-signing him. Um, I, I think you could have worked something out with C.J. Gardner-Johnson. I mean, th- those are two big glaring weaknesses that we could have signed that would have greatly helped this team out. Um I, I just I, I I don't know uh, and again like I I think the season's over I mean yeah they're in the playoffs but who's this team gonna beat like they're not going they they might not even win another game in the regular season I would not, they're gonna split with least with the Giants the Giants will beat them once um, Kyler Murray is like I, I'm I picked up Kyler Murray in one of my fantasy leagues for in hopes that I get to the Super Bowl so I could start him against the Eagles like that is just how bad this team is right now. And, and Arizona has, like, no receivers. And I'm like, I'll start Kyler Murray against the Eagles any day. I mean, it's it's just bad. Um, I, I don't know. I'll have more on it tomorrow when I have time to break it down. But I have a feeling once I break it down, my, my assessment's going to be even worse. But the season's over. It's th- This team is not going anywhere. Like, they're, they're not going to win the division. And where, where are they going to go to Dallas and win? They're not going to go to Detroit and win. Not the way they're playing right now. I mean, they wouldn't. Who else is even? I mean, they'll go to Atlanta and lose, or Tampa Bay and lose. I mean, that that's where this team is right now. It's just horrible. And I think again, there for a while when they were ten and one and finding ways to win, it was they were masking the fact that the secondary was bad. They were masking the fact that they had no linebackers. The entire season, they've gotten no pass rush. Um, <clears throat> Where where did uh, where did Jalen Carter go? I mean, I haven't really seen much out of him other than the fumble against Dallas. Um, like Brandon Graham, where where has he been? Fletcher's playing well, I guess. Uh, Reddick's playing okay, I guess. Josh Sweat's the like the MVP of that defensive line, but like Brandon, where where did Brandon Graham go? Um, where are these guys going? It's it's bad. Like, and we got to figure out now. The question is, Jalen Hurts. 
obviously he maybe isn't as good as he was last year. I don't know if he's as bad as he is this year, but something's off with him. I mean, lots of lots of questions. And again, I, I, I'll I'll look at stuff and, and be more less emotional about it, I guess, tomorrow. But I have a feeling it's going to be even more bleak once you kind of look at it. Because, I mean, you struggled against Drew Locke and, and you're going to go and, and, and compete uh, in the NFC playoffs. Like, if, if you're losing to Drew Locke, you're going to lose to Baker Mayfield. You're going to lose to 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 Atlanta. And I can't even uh, – Ridner. Uh, I mean, you certainly are going to get blown out by San Francisco and, and Dallas again. Uh, I, I do think you're going to – Detroit will blow – Jared Goff will destroy you like right now the way they're playing. I mean, it's it's bad. If, at this point, like tank and get a better draft pick. I mean, lose your next three games because you're not going anywhere. Like if you get lucky and win a playoff game, that's it. Like one and done. Maybe if you get lucky and the other team sucks worse than you, you might win one. But this team, sorry, reality check, not – not doing anything this year. And if that wasn't bad enough, the Sixers, uh, 108-104 loss to the Bulls. Joe was himself again, 30-10. I believe that's his 10th straight or 11th straight game with 30-10. and 10. Maxie had double digits and nobody else, everybody else decided to show up. Uh, I don't know if they were hanging out with the Eagles and it kind of was contagious or what, uh, but they were absolutely brutal trying to – Flip back and forth through that game. It was just brutal. Uh, they they play Minnesota tomorrow. Hopefully they can come out better than what they they played today or or last night. Uh, Flyers in action against the Devils. I guess the saving grace is they didn't lose. Uh, I don't know. Go to Philly Goat. Get a Flyers shirt because they're the only team that really. I mean, I they have great Eagle stuff. Not sure you want to wear the Eagle stuff right now after this, but. Uh, they do have other things besides Eagle stuff. The Philly centric, um, a lot of cool things there. Get a Rocky. At least we know what happened with Rocky. Uh, he can't let you down anymore. Uh, but go to phillygoat.com. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery for ten percent off your order. That's phillygoat.com. Promo code Jim Montgomery for ten percent off your order. Maybe stock up on Eagle stuff now. So by the time they're good again, you have a nice collection of Philly Goat stuff to to wear. Uh, but phillygoat.com, promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order. Quick Phillies update. Bryce Harper, uh, apparently part of the the Phillies pitch to get Yamamoto, was having him FaceTime with him. Um, we'll see how good he is. I mean, Harper's been recruiting a lot of guys to come to Philly. Uh, I do say if Yamamoto decides to come to Philly, and part of the reason is because of Bryce Harper's FaceTime, you need to rework that contract and give him like a front office job, like where he's a dual role because he's the master recruiter at that point. All right. Going back to 2004 today. And on this day, back in 2004, the Eagles beat the Cowboys at the link to improve to 13 and one and clinch home field throughout the playoffs, sweeping through the NFC East that year back when, they could play defense and uh, the, the quarterback was halfway competent um, and the coaching staff wasn't a complete hot mess either. Anyway, back on this game, they trailed seven to six at halftime. Chad Lewis caught a touchdown, but Acres field or extra point attempt was blocked. Uh, tight defensive struggle. See that defensive struggle. They actually stopped people not named Drew Locke, uh, but defensive struggle. Dorsey Levens ran, ran the touchdown in from two yards out with just under two minutes left to give the Eagles the 12-7 lead. The two-point conversion failed. Lito Shepard then intercepted Vinny Testaverde to seal the game uh, with under two minutes left and, and clinch that number one seed for the Eagles. See that? Play good defense. Step up and make a turnover when it matters. Uh, but the win did prove that the Eagles could win a close game with adversity. And that adversity, unfortunately, was on the opening drive of the third quarter. T.O. was tackled from behind after a 20-yard game by Roy Williams with the horse collar, broke his leg, tore some ligaments, and was out until at least the Super Bowl. We all know what happened after that. Miraculously, he came back and played a dominant effort in the the Super Bowl despite the losing effort. Roy Williams, uh, that was like he injured four guys that year, which I didn't realize it was that many, uh, which led to that being a penalty and outlawing the horse collar uh, tackle. But on this day, back in 2004, 
Eagles beat the Cowboys 12 to 7 at the link to improve to 13 and 1, clinch home field throughout the playoffs, that number 1 seed that we're not even going to sniff this year. Uh, and sweeping the NFC East, uh, but the the big story was To breaking his ankle and tearing or breaking his leg and tearing ankles, tearing ligaments in his ankles. I, I'm just so pissed off about the Eagles tearing ligaments in his ankle, uh, missing the rest of the regular season and then the playoff run, but coming back for that magical Super Bowl in which the Eagles couldn't get it done. Of course they didn't get it done. Why would they? Uh, but that happened on this day in 2004. All right, finally to a winner. Today's Philly Sports Advent Calendar gift of the day is you open up the door and it's the 1978-79 Penn Quakers men basketball team, although they did end up disappointing in the end anyway. Uh, But they went 25-7, won the Ivy League for the eighth time in 10 years. They made the NCAA tournament as a nine seed. At the time, there was only 40 teams, so they were the ninth seed out of a 10 seed. Uh, So probably low expectations going on for the Penn Quakers. But they quickly went out and beat Iona, number three UNC, number eight Syracuse, and number 17 St. John's to miraculously get to the Final Four. They played Michigan State in the Final Four and lost uh, pretty handily, 101 to 67, to some freshman named Magic Johnson, uh, who just was dominant. They did lose to DePaul in a thriller, 96 to 93, in overtime for the third place game. Uh, their final ranking was number 14 that season, but they, in the tournament, they took home fourth place. Uh, they were the last Ivy League team to ever make the Final Four. They were led by Tony Price, who averaged almost 20 points a game and almost nine rebounds. Uh, But the Penn Quakers, the last Ivy League team to make the Final Four, and it happened pretty much in a lot of our lifetimes, um, on the outskirts, I guess, of our lifetimes, um, if you're around my age. But 78-79, the 1979 tournament, Penn Quakers made it to the Final Four uh, before losing to Magic Johnson's Michigan State squad. and pretty much a route, but I mean the the struck clock the clock struck midnight for Cinderella. Uh, but what a great team, captivated the region, and just goes to show that if when Philly basketball college basketball is on, it, it's a ton of fun. But the '79 Penn Quakers today's Philly sports advent calendar gift of the day. On this day back in 2004, the Eagles beat the Cowboys 12-7, clinching number one, but losing T.O. for the rest of the regular season and playoffs in the process. We all know how that worked out. I'll have more on the game, I guess, from a logical standpoint. If that, I, I don't even know if I'm ready for, for what's about to happen once I start breaking this stuff down, but we'll have that tomorrow. Um, Flyers tonight. Just remember, don't judge your Chapter 1 to somebody else's Chapter 20. Go thank your kid's teacher because they're out of control this week. They all are. Trust me from experience. You Thank your teacher. And I will say, if you get to know your teacher a little bit, bottles of wine and liquor and booze are strongly encouraged because they need a break from your kids. All right. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery. It's a somber, somber Tuesday here in the area. Try to enjoy it, and until next time, I'll see you when I see you.